Hey there, Chad here. Thanks for joining me. This is Ostronauts, and this is build 0.14 or 14 of Ostronauts. It released recently, and there is a lot of new content, and today we are going to light the candle. We are going to fire up the reactor and light the torch drive. That means we're going to get to travel to another part of the solar system, and in fact, we're going to go to Venus. I'm going to head to a station there called VORB, or Venus Orbital Station. That's our destination. We're going to get there. It'll take about four days to make that trip, but that's the plan for today. Real quick, if you haven't already, I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel. It will help me out, and I do thank you for at least considering doing that. Okay, in the game, in the last episode, we built the reactor. One thing I've added is a second tank of HE3. That is because that's the primary fuel that's used by the reactor and to get to Venus we need about two tanks of it. We could do it on less. It would take much much longer to get there. Like a week or so to get there. So we're going to go with two tanks. We're going to use that up and that is a lot of money of fuel. That's about 70,000 credits of fuel. So something to be mindful of. You do have to have a little bit of cash in order to travel because the fuel is ridiculous. Sounds like today, doesn't it? Okay, so let's go ahead and get started here. Now, our characters tend to be born in space, and that means they are not terribly strong, right? They haven't grown up in a strong G or 1G environment even. They are not born on Earth, so they tend to have weaker muscles and weaker bones. And one of the things they've tossed into the game in this build is the ability to do injections to help with dealing with high G maneuvers. So I'm going to use the pen injector for GraviSign. And as you can see, if you read through that, it basically helps with dealing with high G maneuvers. I don't know if it's effective or not. What I do know is my character will not be able to move for a good portion of the flight. He can move a little bit, but he's very, very, very slow. He will be able to uh, do some stuff, but it won't be easily done. I haven't seen where the gravity sign helps with that part of things, but I would assume that there is a longer term effect perhaps where it keeps him healthier or something like this. We'll, we'll have to see. So we have trash on the floor because he just dropped it there. Uh, and that's because he used that and there aren't trash cans in the game. So he just dropped it on the floor. We'll pick that up. But next stop is the nav station. Okay, now we have not fired up the reactor yet. We will do that shortly. What I want to do right this moment is undock, and we've done this before. You've probably done it several times if you've been playing the game. It's kind of requirement to be really do anything, but there we go. And I think I'm paid up on my fees. Looks like I am. So we are going to undock and jump over here. We'll back up and move a little bit to the right. Okay, that's looking good. Now I am going to accelerate time to get clear of the station. And then uh, I'm going to slow things back down and I'm going to point the ship in what we would refer to on the map as a northerly direction. Obviously there is no north in space, but uh, on this map there, there can be, and that'll be the top and we're going to head that way. Now what I'm doing is I'm wanting to find a clear channel out of here. I don't really have to navigate around stuff. So we're going to basically fly this way. The reason we're going to do that is in order to fire up the drive, we need to be clear of obstacles and out of the wake zone. Now the obstacles part I think is subjective, but the wake zone, not so much. We can fire the drive up, but my sense is Bad things can happen when you do that. So we're going to get well clear, and it looks like I continued to rotate. And I kind of wanted to stop it there. Now, while he's moving, we're going to, I'm going to clean that up just a little more. We're going to accelerate, and we're actually going to accelerate to 600 meters a second. And at one time speed, that would take a real long time. We're going to go up to 16. Oh, that didn't go as I had hoped. Once again, it is not 
zeroing rates for me very well. I've been having this issue periodically. I get the spin bug uh, happening when I dock. It's been happening quite a bit. So hopefully that's good. And we can, there we go. That looks a lot better. So we're going to accelerate up to 600 meters per second. We'll just go eight times to get there. I wonder if I had my finger on the wrong key. That is possible. Uh, I don't think that's what happened, but it, it has been known to happen. So, okay, we're approaching where we want to be going. Six, oh, wow, that was pretty good. 600 and we'll do 602. So it looks like that should be pretty clear. We're good to go for a bit. So while we're moving away, we'll slow back down, time that is, and we're going to go and fire up the reactor. Now, I did demonstrate this in the previous video. We're just going to do that those steps again and then we will come back and hopefully be in a position where we can fire up that torch drive okay so this might look familiar this is the reactor screen though i have to say this is really well done for a video game these things actually mean things and i like that i like it when it means something i have a game called re-entry which simulates the early american space race it has uh, replications of the Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo capsules, and they, my understanding is they've taken a lot of effort to make them as realistic as possible, and everything in there does the thing it's supposed to do, and that's a pretty cool game. Extremely steep learning curve. Um, you have to be an astronaut to play it successfully, I think, <laughs> but there you have it. Okay, so we went ahead and we, I gave it a minute to fire up. The capacitor takes a little bit of time to charge, and this light would be red until it finishes. Once it gets up here to ready, that light changes, and we're good to continue with our checklist. Technically, we could skip that part and allow it to you know, do its thing, but I like to wait for it. So the laser align. We'll turn that on and we will turn on the pellet feeder. We will turn on cryo. Cryo doesn't give us a visual just yet. It's because the reactor is not running. So we're not gonna see a temperature show up or anything, but it is on and ready to go once that happens. The fuel regulator, then we'll turn on the field coils. You'll notice that ignition light is ready, it says here. And I think we probably could turn it on right now, but I'm gonna finish the checklist. We're gonna turn that on and we are good to go. So we're in battery. I don't know that we have to turn this to charge. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and leave it alone for now. All we have to do now is flip the switch and our reactor is running. As you can see, it's figuring out how much fuel it's going to use right now and how much fuel we have available. Okay, and some of these will turn red when we, when we make that switch. Don't worry about that too much. It will come back online. This will continue to charge back up and it will be fine. We're going to run back to the uh, nav station and speed that up for a second. I do tend to leave my doors open in my compartments in uh, in this kind of a situation. I don't I don't worry too much about making sure that everything is airtight. Uh, we'll talk about that a little further into the journey on some of the things we might expect or see happen while we're while we're traveling. So right now, my next step is to basically just fast forward time until the no wake zone light goes off. So that's what we're going to do. Shouldn't take too long. A little bit past this ship and it will probably turn off. And there it is. So now I'm going to pause. Now, pausing is important at this point. I'm also going to bring time back down to one time. So for the next steps that we do, we want to be paused and we're going to stay paused for a little bit of time. The, the speed that you, excel, you uh, have time running at doesn't matter much. I like to bring it to one anytime I kind of change state in the game. Now, we had not yet turned on the thrust cycle. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll click here on active and we just click that and it's on. So we are ready to give it thrust. And, but we do need a course first, and we will engage the course once we have one. In order to have a course, we need to have a target. O leg is too close. The minimum distance to use a torch drive is 5,000 kilometers. And as I said, we're going to go to Venus. So we're going to roll way, way, way out here. Like way, way out. There we go. Now we're seeing stuff. And this is Venus. And I want to go to V orb or VORB. 
usually it's the one that it shows up right away. There it is. It's right in the center there. But if you miss it and you can't find it, what you can do is switch to target for your tracking mode and zoom in and then find the one you want to go to. Of course, you're not obligated to go to this one. It does tend to be the closest. Maybe we could go, I think this is Earth over here. Might be possible we could go that way sometime to Oh Palace. So I'm not actually sure what that is. But what I've been told is there's fun stuff at Venus. Uh, so that's where we're going to go. And in the interest of full disclosure, I did run through this one time to make sure I could do it. We do have some surprises ahead of us. So let's uh, keep that in mind as we as we move forward here. OK, that is a really weird ship name there, isn't it? Acknowledge message, I guess. I don't know. All right. So we are still paused and we want it that way. And now we are going to plot our course. And that is a matter of simply having a target and clicking plot course. Now this is good. This is our course and it comes to our ship and that's that's a plus. If you do this, if you click it and you don't see a line coming to your ship, something is probably wrong and you're not going to be able to engage the course. In fact, when you click it, what will happen is you'll get a message down here that says that you've drifted from the course too much. I don't know if it's intentional, if it's a side effect of some other things happening, but every once in a while what I've seen is this line doesn't touch the ship, it doesn't get all the way here. It'll cut off a little short, maybe here sometimes. Sometimes it's way, way out. And I think maybe what's happening is it means that the course is intersecting something and so it doesn't want to plot it right now is, is really what it comes down to. If you're trying to do this and you get that message or you can't get it to give you a line all the way to here. And by the way, I'm not sure that actually means 100% that we are good to go yet. We will know when we click this. We're going to wait a minute on that. But if you do have a problem and it's not allowing you to plot the course and gives you that message, just move for a little bit, maybe 30 seconds, a minute, two minutes, give it a little bit of time, allow your situation to change enough that trying to plot it again gives it a, a different alternative to how to plot the course. And what I've seen is usually within just moving, you know, maybe a minute, I've been able to plot courses when that has happened. Now, I sound like an old, uh, a long timer on this. I probably plotted a total of 10 or 12 courses. It did happen to me twice though. Uh, and that was just me trying to determine how some of this worked by moving uh, the sliders and that to see how it, how it functioned. I wasn't always able to get a good course, so. There you have it. So we're going to zoom in here and we're mostly ready to go, but let's look and see what's happening here. So our long range course plot, we have plotted the course. We see the line. That's all good. It looks like we probably have a good course. As things stand right now, the trip would take us just under 80 hours. That's kind of what I expected. But the problem is it wants to use 76 hours of fuel. We don't have that much. We actually have 26.19 hours of fuel. So currently we can't fly this course. We could start to, but we'll never get there. But we can adjust these two sliders, the short, so the drift phase and the acceleration limit. We can adjust these and that will change how these numbers react. Now, one thing to note, as mentioned, our guy cannot handle a high G load. In fact, he's going to, regardless of where we end up, even at one and a half Gs, he's going to end up completely burdened and unable to move. I think we can only go up to about two right now. Yep, yeah, up to 1.9. But if you'll notice, even if, pardon me, even we do that, we limit the trip to two days and about six hours, but we're using fuel the entire time. We don't have that much fuel still. So what we do is we increase the amount of time that we're not using fuel. So the drift phase is how long the engine is not burning during the trip. Right now it is burning pretty much the entire time. We can also set it to where it airs out because it's a it's a divide by zero error is what it really comes down to is my guess. Uh, we don't want to do that. We don't certainly don't want to break it, but we could make it so that the trip takes, you know, several weeks to complete. But we only use two hours of fuel. Well, that can be at least efficient on the pocketbook, but I don't want to fast forward at six hours a shot for 800 hours. That'd be 150, 150 cycles of that. That's not happening. I'm not doing that. Um, so we're going to aim for something more in here where it makes sense. So what I think we can do is we can up the acceleration to about 1.5, maybe a little more than that. 
uh, maybe 1.6. Let's go with 1.6. And as you can see right now, we could do this trip. Everything, all the numbers turned. Uh, I'm going to call it green. The numbers are all green. We are using uh, 24 hours of fuel, and we can make the trip in three days, eight hours, nine hours, 10 hours, I guess. Three days and 10 hours, we'll be there. Now, I did buy a lot of food. The fridge is stocked. I'm not worried about food. I'm not worried about water. I have two flasks of water with a ton of water in each of them. Certainly enough to make a one-way trip. So we're okay there. The only thing we're losing is some time. But that's okay. We can use some of that time. The time we're drifting, which if you look at this, will be roughly 55 hours. 55 hours of our time will be spent just drifting. We have, can use that time to work on the ship. So this is what we're going to go with for our course. Now the only step left is we do want to stay paused. Okay, that's important. We're going to hit course engage. And the light stayed on. That's a good sign. That means that it did indeed like this course. And then we're going to unpause. And we are now moving. I, he is rotating. I don't like that. I hope that'll stop. I'm going to assume that will stop. Yeah, there it did. OK, so it's basically on autopilot now. You'll notice that we have accelerated. I wasn't watching it closely, but this number came up from 0, 0.00. These sliders moved around, and this light kind of started to climb. We now have some heat in the core. As you recall, when we turned on the cryo at the reactor, it nothing came on, but now there are some lights on there. So we are indeed underway. The clock will continue to tick down. OK, that's all we really have to look at here. We can walk away from this. Now, you don't want to mess with it. Uh, certainly leave it going, right? If you turn this off, the engine will shut down and you'll have to replot and start again. So we don't want to do that. And we're just going to step away. And that, friends, is the basics on how to use the torch drive. That process will get you through it, and it'll get you on your way to your destination. Now, when you get to a destination like Venus, there's some other things we're going to need to discuss, but we're going to save that for another video. I really do appreciate your time. And again, if you haven't, I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel. Thank you again for watching. And until next time, fair travels.